Now I always think of my GS1100E like a bottle of fine wine, and I'm going to explain why in the course of this video. And you can watch it and join us on this ride in 4K. Just adjust your device. Now it's about this time of year, every year, I start to look around, I take out the, uh, the log books for the bikes, and start to see on some bikes I have less than a thousand miles to go before there's an oil change or some other maintenance or tires. And I don't want to get up the horse ahead of the cart here because I was going to do that today. I was going to start scheduling up all the maintenance. What I like to do is ride every day that I possibly can. And then there'll be, and the tip, typically this time of year it's unpredictable, there'll be days I don't want to ride because of the weather it's raining or cold or whatever. And then I'll get into doing all the maintenance on the bikes. But when you have this many bikes, there's a lot of maintenance. And somebody's got to do it. Nobody comes over and does it for me. So the first, the first order of every day is go to the wine cellar and take out a few bottles of wine. And some of this wine is a lot older than other bottles of wine. I had to do a little bit of maintenance on some of the bikes today before I went out on a ride. Just normal stuff has to be done. And keep in mind, these bikes, four of them are historically registered. That means they're free bikes for life. The state of Jersey doesn't charge for registration. They're free for life. I kind of like that. I have four of them that are historically registered. Four bottles of wine ready to drink. The only problem is I don't drink at all. But I do like having free bikes, so but that would be worth mentioning. Anyway, there's always a routine in my life anyway of things that have to be done on the motorcycles, the pre-flight, the checking the air and the tires, check the chain, check the oil. Older bikes, the more you check them, <laughs> the better you are. And every once in a while, you do find something. It's amazing, but they, I keep them running as best I can. And I really do like keeping it clean. Now, I know a lot of people, I get, every once in a while, I get somebody make a comment on a channel, ah, you don't really have to clean the bike every time you ride it. Yeah, you're right. You don't have to shower every week or every month, <laughs> maybe every year, I don't know. Anyway, I anybody that doesn't have a fish pond might not realize how much work there is maintaining and keeping fish. It's a labor of love. But you know what? Everything in my life, maybe in your life too, everything I do is a labor of love. There's nothing I do that requires like just no effort at all. Now, another thing I like to do for my bride when I'm done with the bike and I have it all ready, I always, two things. She's checking the weather for me. Looks good, but it's supposed to be unpredictable today and get cloudy. And I like to get her fresh flowers every morning. We still have zinnias, we still have tomatoes in the garden, and as long as it lasts, we'll take advantage of every day. She'll get me an extra cup of coffee, get out on the open road, and final check of everything around the farm, and we are ready to get out on the open road. And take advantage of every day that the weather allows you. Even though this day is predicted to get cloudy, I don't care, I still want to get out on the open road. So being honest, over the years, the many years I've been involved in motorcycling, I have bought a lot of bikes that I really loved the first day I rode them, a little bit less a week later. A month later, I was thinking, oh, what, what was I thinking when I bought this? And a year later, of course, or even sooner, you, know, you dump the dollies and get rid of them and, uh, and buy something else. Now, a lot of my friends buy and sell a lot of bikes. I've kind of settled in on the bikes I want in my collection, and I think I've made choices that suit me well. And everybody has a different riding style, things they like, things they're willing to put up with, things they're willing to pay for. This bike, you know, for 42 years, has suited my needs just about as good as any could be. And a little cherry on the Sunday. Once you get your historic registration, you're good to go for as long as you own the bike for absolutely free. Now, I know there are people, and my friend Jim Skinner is one that uh, would enjoy making this bike into a drag bike. 
I know there are several friends. Joe Padula has a cousin that has a very highly modified one. I know Joe Padula's got a totally stock one. And as I look around, mine is modified. I, they always start with overdrive gearing. I got to ride 30 miles out to the riding area each way. That overdrive gearing is worth every penny. Now, everything about the bike is set up for my personal needs. Maybe not for your needs, but it suits me fine, and I just love jumping on this bike any season of the year and opening that throttle up. And like fine wine, what's, what really has impressed me the most about the bike, of course the engine is the most impressive, but the way the suspension has held up over many, many years, like a bottle of fine wine. And this is the third set of Michelin Commanders that I've had on a bike. They are I, all the tires that I've ever had on a bike, over 80,000 miles. Those are by far the best. There's always a lot of little things about a motorcycle that over the long haul, over 42 years of ownership, they either, they either make you fall in love or they make you get annoyed. What That engine, I just never get sick of that engine. That engine has the torque of a tractor. I've upgrade, upgraded the brakes to EBC floating rotors, steel brake lines. Thank you, Joe Padula. Thank you, Pokey. And having a decent sized gas tank that you're not always looking for a gas station, 200 mile range. A lot of little things make this bike. And of course, one thing, very special. I love the sound of that engine. Now, every bit of the maintenance on this bike is just, just so easy to do. It's easy to change the plugs, super easy to change the oil and filter, and the valve adjustments, I love the fact there are no shims, no buckets of shims to do. And to me, it has the feel of a real old school 70s, 80s, even 90s motorcycle. Before the bikes were all covered with fiberglass and you could sit up in a comfortable position and the low end torque wasn't missing in the power band. Every part of it, it just reminds me of that time when I really was in love with motorcycles. Hey, and I'm, to be honest, I'm still in love with them. And as I get older, I look back at my life and I think of some of the things I sold that I really wish I could get back. My 55 Chevy, of course. The H1s and H2s, my water buffalo. All of the things I wish I could get back. But you know what, in the end, there's a bottom line to everything. This bike had me tempted at a time. A friend of mine, Andy Lee, who ultimately bought the same bike, really wanted to buy it. He was a serious buyer. And I, I was tempted to sell it. And I said, no, nah, no. Nah. There were too many things about it I liked. And there were other bikes I owned at the time that, oh, yeah, if he would won one of those, I would have sold it. But, but this one, there's something about it. I don't know. I really am at a loss for words when it comes to trying to put it in words that are easy to understand. It's a keeper. It's an old school bike. And it is just absolutely fun to ride. And if there was something about it not to like, I think it would have surfaced in the 80,000 miles I've, I've had to, uh, to abuse it and enjoy it. And just, just like sipping a fine bottle of wine in these back roads where it's really, really nice and relaxing to ride and twisty, elevation changes. Roads are still clean. The leaves haven't dropped yet and they haven't salted the roads. You just take your time, enjoy the wine. And one of the best mods I made Getting rid of the 630 chain and sprockets, getting a 520 kit, and Vlad got me the overdrive sprockets, 16 front, 40 back. I don't run
run tubes in the tires. I've heard that some people do, <laughs> but I've never really figured out what the bottom line is. But these do not have tubes in them. And of course, all styling is in the eye of the beholder, but to me, this is one of the prettiest, most stylized bikes, I think, of all time. It's right up there in, with the top, anytime you discuss the best looking bike. One thing over the years I have changed and experimented with and put the stock bars that come with the bike back on. They're weighted inside where the hand grips are. They're solid steel and they're very heavy and they, they kill off a lot of buzz and vibration at really high speeds. And I just did a video on that. It's still out on the channel, uh, maybe a week before. It's just search the channel with how to cure buzz. I think that's a significant thing for anybody that owns a GS. And what makes a bike like this worth restoring, worth keeping, worth maintaining, and I try to over maintain it of course, because it's not a focused bike that only does one thing well. It does a lot of things, a really lot of things well. And when you combine the comfort, the fact you get almost 50 miles to the gallon, that, that it's powerful, that it, it handles, it's just a bike that to me I want to keep for the rest of my life. Well. It was a great ride, a lot of fun, unpredictable weather. <laughs> and it's unfortunately time to get back to the farm and put this fine bottle of wine back in the wine cellar, back in the wine fridge. I don't know, I don't drink, so I don't know. Time to get back to the farm. So I get home, not a drop of rain by the way, and it was cloudy most of the day. No rain though. And Karen's busy picking probably the last of the tomatoes here, but we have had such a good season and such a good bike, just like a fine bottle of wine. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button if you did, and thank you so much for watching.